Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in North Ayrshire and I'm going to head to a place called Cleves Cove. It's actually a cave system near a little village called Dalry. It's a beautiful day here in Scotland folks. We had a storm last night, Storm Arwen they're calling it. Now you wouldn't believe it to see it now but there was a 90, 100 mile an hour winds. There was actually some people killed unfortunately. Now we didn't feel it so bad here over on the west but the east coast of the country was battered. Now it's beautiful but it's cold. <laughs> it's just above freezing at the moment. I'm going to say maybe one or two degrees so when you're riding on the bike obviously you feel that. Feel it much colder than that with the wind chill. Now we're going to pop in here. This is Eglinton Country Park. I'll we'll have a quick look. We're not going to be here for very long. I'm not entirely sure where I want to park here. Let's go through these gates actually. Well, that's busy. Right then, looks quite interesting. Somebody must have crashed that and somebody's left it here just in case they come back for it. We find it. Looks like a little kid's road. Let's see if we can find it. In. I got a little bit stuck back there in that sort of visitor centre. Seems like most of that seems to be shut. It's, but people are out walking around in the, the woods and stuff. Really unfamiliar with this place. I'm not sure exactly what way to go. So because there's lots of paths. We'll go this way because there's a little lock and stuff down. An interesting building. This bridge is called Tournament Bridge. The castle just sits over the other side of here. So there's not much left of the original castle, as you can see. This used to belong to the Earls of Eglinton. It was later controlled by the Montgomery clan. A lot of kids and stuff running around. Doesn't look like much now, folks, but this must have been some building back in the day. Yeah, it had 365 windows, one for each day of the year. The outline of the castle is very easily visible and it's huge, <laughs> you know, it's very, very big. We said that this was similar in stature to um, Culloden Castle. They started work, I think, 17, late 1790s, completed about 1802. Now, the building itself fell into disrepair in the 1920s and the reason there's so little left of it is that during the Second World War it was used as target practice. It was used by the Royal Engineers. It was also used by the Navy. <laughs> they practiced their bombardments or their gunnery here. Whilst it was obviously undoubtedly important, they practiced blowing things up <laughs> and for the Navy to practice their gunnery. It's a little bit of a shame that this beautiful historic monument was utterly destroyed. Oh well, the kids still like it. Here at Eglinton the appeal seems to be the countryside and the walks rather than coming to see the monument itself. Right then, let's go find these caves. It wasn't here for long folks, it takes about a time to put the drone up and stuff but Running. Quite a famous abbey here. Well, I don't know if it's that famous, but we've got Cold Winning Abbey here. Oh, yeah, there is. Number 27. That's a nice house. <laughs> a lot of house, you might say. So this is an old mill, as you can see. But it's now a museum. This is one of these sort of country life museums. You've got like the hotel and restaurant and stuff across the road now. I'd like to come back here. 
these old Land Rovers. That's something I read about the Eglinton country part there. The, the British Army left a whole bunch of vehicles behind which were just sort of buried <laughs> and semi-buried. Imagine using a country house as target practice, but I guess it was already abandoned at that time. And it probably wasn't considered one of Scotland's most um, important historic monuments, let's just say that. Not that there's anything wrong with Eglinton, but look at this sky. My days. That's one thing I love about this time of year. See these sort of clear skies that you sometimes get in between the rain? <laughs> that cold, crisp mornings. Purple skies. I think I need to go left here. I think this old railway bridge. Nope. I've gone to the sat nav, not too far from here. But these uh, caves are right on the water, folks, are right next to the river. That's the turning. There we go. Let's turn the bike. <laughs> Beautiful here. Look at that sky. I've said that before, but wow. Now you're probably wondering why I'm going to find these caves, folks. Apart from this uh, natural interest in trying to find a cave, there's quite a lot of history attached to them. Some interesting little stories and stuff. Look okay, at this. That looks promising. There's a path there. And there's a path there. Now then, let's park the bike. See the top of that mountain there? That's actually Aaron. Yeah. If I've got time, I'll put the drone up. No promises though. We're in golden hour right enough. Look at this little lane here. Right then. Let's go through here. Now it's not too far to walk. Yeah. And I know that because the sat nav took me to this person's house. And these caves are basically on their property, yeah. Um, but they very kindly said that it's not, not a problem, you can come here. Everybody's welcome, yeah, but obviously just don't leave a mess or whatever. Because they've had uh, a fair few issues over the years that I'll tell you about. Look at this. Stunning. No camping and no fires. Beware snakes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's their house there, eh? I said that if I come from the house straight down the hill, there should be a path down in this direction. And the caves are on this sort of cliff side, running next to the river. Let's see. Okay. This is looking rather promising. I'm guessing it must be along the side of those cliffs on the left there. Somewhere. Get state of these boots already. I need to put this camera away before I break a, an ankle. <laughs> okay, so. Don't do that. Okay, so it's worth noting when you're coming down these hills carrying cameras and helmets and it's extremely slippy, don't do that. You might just fall. Luckily, luckily I wasn't closer to the river here. Otherwise I would have had a really bad day. Yeah. Now then, let's see if we can see a cave entrance. A small one go right, which means I'm going to be going along that mud banking. Let's go look. Quite an obvious path here. Oh. Aha. Apparently these run for about 500 feet. So they're not huge, they're certainly big enough. I'm no geologist, yeah, but these caves here stretch for about 500 feet. Now, parts of them are caved in, 
and the owner of this property here believes that they're much more extensive they just uncovered and to be honest when I look at the topography here really odd shaped hills and stuff and I think he's probably right to be honest but as you can see it's gonna be dark any minute and I better get out of here in case the elves get me that's a little story I'll tell you in a second right this is Dusk Glen folks and this little river here is Dusk Water which means black water Dusk is when sun sets you know so we're quite familiar with that word so the common anters used to hide out here and they were persecuted for religious reasons yeah both north and south of the border so common anters used to hide out in this cave so around about 1630 1685 so for quite a significant period of time when Sir Charles II was on the throne yeah so the preacher Peden would come to these types of glens and preach to people and they would do it in places where they could hide now we talk about the Covenanters being here, you know, several hundred years ago. But there are charcoal deposits in this cave that are Stone Age, you know. And there's also been a bronze ring found and Iron Age spear tips. So people have been living in these caves for, you know, time immemorial. Now the owner here of this property I was talking to, he kindly offered to let me park the bike and stuff there. Of course everybody's welcome to come here. But try not to disturb folks, try not to make too much mess. He was telling me some of the things that he's he's fished out of these caves over the years. Rubber dinghies, <laughs> guitars, see there's little candles and stuff in there. If you want to come here and sing Kumbaya, at least try and take a guitar home with you. Because these are at least somewhat relevant in the story of the British Isles folks. There's also been quite a significant amount of damage. Most of the stalactites and stalagmites have been broken off and taken away as souvenirs. Local legend has it that elves live in this cave. This is called Elf Haim. Haim meaning home. These little elves come riding out at dusk, right around now actually, on horses that are the size of mice. And they've got yellow hair that are tied back in knots with gold crimps. They wear green velvet clothes and they drink wine from quakes. Now a quake is a cup in Scotland, yeah? And they drink wine whilst they're sitting under toadstools. They're all around me here actually. And so far all of that sounds quite cutesy, yeah? Little velvet jackets drinking drinking wine under mushrooms. But these little elves are evil and it's particularly bad around Halloween apparently. They come riding out with evil intent. Believe it or not, their arrows are tipped with hemlock poison. Now I don't know, there must be hemlock around here somewhere. And their bows are made of the rib cages of unbaptized babies. They were buried in the, in the glen here. What a lovely bedtime story. So next time you come here with your guitar and you decide to leave it behind or your rubber dinghy, just be careful. Anyway, I better get out of here, folks. I think I can hear the sound of tiny hooves. What a way to go. Anyway, that's it for this one. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. And I'll see you in the next one.